Your friend Michael lies in bed, depressed all day, addicted to video games, scrolls on social media, no drive at all. Then there's you, endless drive, energy, leans into life, pursues things, and a much happier person overall. And as Andrew Huberman puts it, the difference between these two people is one main thing, low versus high levels of dopamine. Dopamine is closely related to motivation. And just as a bit of a simplified explanation, the more dopamine you have, the more motivated you are to do something. It's like a power potion if you played video games before, where you take it and you instantly feel motivated or energized to go and pursue the goal that you want. Now, of course, discipline is important, but wouldn't it be nice to also be motivated to study, exercise, or do hard work? It is, and this is a key to getting high grades, self-improvement, loving relationships, whatever you want. It all comes down to this. Can you make your own dopamine? Now, we're not talking about literally going to a science lab and making this chemical. We're just talking about how we can naturally increase the levels of dopamine that we have. And this is covered in detail in this two hour long podcast Huberman had. And I wanted to share two actionable steps that work the best for me, which you can do right now. The first thing is a physical action. And this is the one habit that has been shown to be the safest and most effective way to increase your natural levels of dopamine. And that's cold exposure. So either taking a cold shower or a cold bath. And this is basically when you shower, you wanna step into the freezing cold shower for even 10 to 20 seconds. So what I usually do is I walk in the shower and I just turn the cold faucet basically all the way. And then I basically go, okay, screw it. I'm just gonna go all in. And I'm literally like, <gasps> cause the water is like so cold. So I was basically like gasping and panting, even if it's for like 10 seconds of cold exposure. And I know what you might be thinking, it is extremely painful. And I hate myself whenever <laughs> doing a cold shower. But I will say in all honesty, as soon as it's over, the moment it's over, you feel this just undescribable sense of achievement. Like nothing else comes close to the sense of achievement that you get after you finish a cold shower. And the science behind this, backed by Andrew Huberman, is that cold exposure has been shown to significantly increase your dopamine levels, even higher than that of taking cocaine. And so this is extremely powerful in giving you a surge of motivation that allows you to do things that otherwise take a lot of resistance, like studying or exercise. And this is just the bro science explanation, but the way I see it is, because a cold shower is so hard, after you do this incredibly hard thing, anything else like exercise exercising or studying, which by itself might be hard, but compared to cold showering, it's relatively easy. So cold exposure has definitely been a game changer for me. The second actionable step is not a physical action, but it is a mental action, which is just as important. So just to give you some context, I used to be a video game addict and I used to play video games for 10 plus hours each day, which sounds like a lot, but it's not that hard, honestly, because you're just sitting on the couch, moving your thumbs a bit. But the second I put down my phone, I would just hate my life, I'll feel extremely dizzy, I'll have no appetite, and I'll just be angry towards my parents or other people for no reason. And the opposite is this. I would sometimes go for a 10 hour hike. I'll be extremely tired, sweaty, sore as fuck, and I feel like collapsing any second. But the thing is, that night when I lie in bed with sore legs, I am infinitely more satisfied. And I realized through this little comparison that the amount of true pleasure or happiness that I got was directly correlated to how much pain I experienced. And you might think that pleasure and pain are completely opposites and they're on opposite sides of the spectrum, but they're actually two sides of the same coin. And there's a scientific explanation for this. And Huberman talks about how the more pain you experience, the more dopamine you release. And you might be thinking this sounds super wishy-washy, it's just some made up brain trick. But Huberman has a full two hour podcast that goes into detail why this actually works. But the main takeaway I got from this entire podcast is this. Right before you do something hard like studying or a workout, think to yourself, okay, this is gonna be painful, but because it is going to be painful, my future self is going to enjoy a much greater reward once the pain is over. And the thing is my younger self would have dismissed this advice but I wish I could go back and tell my younger self that as cliche as it sounds, the reward is not what you're after. And instead, interestingly, it's the process of going through pain and surviving that pain that will give you the greatest amount of reward that no amount of video games or drugs will ever give you. And the byproduct of going through all this pain is that you will have endless motivation to achieve your goals.